Hello and welcome to a brand new video. This week I'm going to be covering something a little simpler than last week, and that is photo stitch. Something I promised to cover in my first video, in the basics video, in a bit more depth. And since I'm making a more in-depth manual digitization video, it's taking a bit longer than I anticipated. I thought I may as well get this video out for the beginners in the meantime. I think for most people, when they start getting into digitizing or get their first ever embroidery machine, the idea of being able to turn a picture into stitches and then stitch it out with very little effort is sort of the holy grail idea of digitizing. Those who have been doing it for a long time know that there are compromises you have to make when you're doing this. But I'm going to show you how to use photo stitch in the sort of least compromising way and to get the best results that you can out of it. To start off, we're going to go to the image tab, which is up here on the left. And then we're going to select photo stitch. As you can see, there's actually a few options here, but they're just to do with color. Um, mono is just going to be one color. Gray is just going to be a variety of gray colors. Sepia is just going to be sepia tones, like red tones. And then you have color, which is going to be your full color photo stitch. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. I'm going to go ahead and select color. That'll bring me up into the last destination that I viewed in P Design 11, which was my downloads folder. For this video again, I'm going to be using Plexels. Plexels is a great place to find images, um, royalty free, so that you can use them in your, your own designs. I like to give shout outs to the people whose photos I'm using, so I'm going to show it on screen here. Um, and I'll put a link in the description so that you can follow along too in this tutorial. The same as last time, I'm going to go on the drop down on the free downloads at the top right, and I'm going to select the small setting. The larger the image, the harder time that P Design 11 is going to have sort of dealing with that image, um, and it can cause some slowdown on the program. So you want to go as small as possible, as long as it doesn't lose you too much detail. In this case, 640 by 640 will be totally fine. I'm going to click download selected file size. That's going to end up in my downloads folder. I'm going to hop back over to P Design 11. And then I'm going to go ahead and select it. If it doesn't appear there straight away, just close it, open it up again, and then it will be there for you to download. As you can see in this preview image here. I'm going to go ahead and click open. For those of you who have used Photo Stitch before and may not have known what they were doing at the time, you probably just saw the photo, click next, fit it to the page maybe, or maybe even not, um, hit next again, and then you end up with this, um, which isn't the best, it, it's fine if you want to stitch out for about 10 hours, but I don't think it's the best result, I don't think it's optimal, and if you hit finish, it's 57,000 stitches, and that's going to take you god knows how long, it's just a bit of a nightmare. I'm going to show you how I use photo stitch to, to get the best results and the minimal amount of sort of time required with the least faff. So I'm going to go into photo stitch again, select color, and it's at this stage that I want to isolate the target of my photo stitch. I'm not fussed about the background, I don't really care about the background. Images with good separation from the background are going to be a lot easier to use in this method. If it's got a white background, like a person standing against a white background, or any object on a white background, that's sort of preferable. Um, but a lot of the time you can't actually get that. So in this image, the background's quite separated, but there are still details in the background, so I'll show you how to deal with that. First of all, you can see these little anchors in the corner. If you grab them, you can drag the box size around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate my subject. There we go, I've isolated my car in the middle. Then I'm going to go ahead and click Clipping Mask in the bottom left. As you can see, it's created a sort of blue mesh over my image, and I have some tools at the top. If I was to hit OK on this, and then go Next, you can see that, if I enlarge the image, you can see that the road underneath the car has not been separated and it still exists, which will look odd in the final stitch out as it will sort of merge this front bumper into the floor, um, which is not really what we want. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back into Clipping Mask. 
Then I'm going to zoom in on the right hand side. Then I'm going to look at that area that I just spoke about. So there are some tools at the top that you may have noticed. And I want to use this negative brush. What that does is it tells the sort of AI algorithm that I do not want this part to be stitched. So as you can see, I've just roughly drawn with green, this green negative pen where I don't want to be stitched. And then I'm going to click update preview at the bottom right. This tells the AI algorithm that we don't want that part to be stitched. And then it tries recalculating it again without stitching that part. If we wanted to be really picky, you can see there's a tiny bit of the top here and a tiny bit of the car on the right hand side there that we do want to be stitched. So with the positive tool, I can paint that back in with that magenta color and then hit update preview again. And as you can see, it's filled out those areas so that they're now included. I'm going to zoom out. And I'm mostly happy with the results. As you can understand, it's going to be converted into stitches. So any small imperfections are, don't matter too much. Actually, right there, that's a bit of an issue. That's a big chunk. Fill that in quickly. Right, that, that'll do. I'm going to hit OK. At this point, you can see that it's created points around the edge. Um, and these points, you can actually move individually. So if you didn't trust the AI to do the job for you, you can grab these points and move them slightly to make sure that you're encompassing the entire area that you want to stitch out. Um, but that's if you're just very picky. Image tune at the bottom right will allow you to tune your original image to increase the contrast if you're not getting results that you wanted out of this process. If your background wasn't very um, separated, you could perhaps increase the contrast to try and separate the background a bit more from the image and help the AI a little bit in separating those two elements and trying to figure out what the key element of the photo is. Um, it worked fine for me though, so I'm just going to leave it in the original colors. The bottom one is saturation, just if you wanted to know. That increases the saturation of the image or decreases it. And the top one is brightness. If you have a particularly bad quality image, you might want to adjust this sharpness slider. Um, obviously, you won't want to go too far with it because it starts creating artifacts. But this sharpness slider can be useful if you're working with a really bad quality image or if you just want to pop a little bit more detail out of your um, your subject. Right, I'm going to go ahead and click next now. On this screen is where you're going to be sort of sizing your stitch out. As you can see at the bottom left, it shows me the size of the stitch out. That's 284 by 153 millimeters, um, which is going to be very large actually. Doing photo stitches of this size are def is definitely possible, but it will take a long time to stitch out we're talking hours here so filling this page with this it's um it's probably not what i would do <laughs> i'll put it like that i'm going to go ahead and reduce it to a more realistic size of perhaps 150 millimeters by 81 and just moving that into the center of my frame in this page also you can also change the frame size if you wanted to do that at this point I'm going to leave it as is, but if you wanted to at this point, you could change your frame size to something more realistic. I'm going to go ahead and click next again. Right, now this is the interesting part. A lot of people don't really want to mess around with this because they're sort of scared that they're going to ruin it or just don't know what they're doing, basically. Um, and I'm going to explain it to you from the top down. Right, thread chart is self-explanatory. That's selecting whatever thread type that you use personally. I use Madeira Rayon threads, so I'm gonna select that. Auto-selecting the thread is pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna be based on the max number of colors that you want to use. Um, if you have a six needle machine, for example, you might wanna set that to six. Um, and then when you hit update preview here at the bottom, 
it will make it so that it uses a maximum of six colors. But those colors won't be chosen by you, they will have been chosen by the computer, based on what it thinks is best. If you turn auto select off, you are then able to choose your colors freely. For example, say if I didn't want this blue, I could remove it and then add my own variety of blue. Let's say this like more teal blue. Um, I can update the preview and it will have replaced that blue with the blue that I chose. Um, and you can do that multiple times. Let's go ahead and add another one, perhaps that. Update the preview and as you can see, I, I can I can customize whatever colors I want to use. I don't really want to do that because it won't look right. So to remove these colors after I've changed my mind, I need to unreserve them. If, if a color is reserved, it will stay no matter what when you update the preview. For example, if I up if I reserved this black and this blue, if I change the colors down to two and then updated the preview, it would use only the black and blue because they're reserved instead of trying to calculate new colors. I'm going to go ahead and change that back to six and unreserve the colors. Right, under the sewing options, you have level of detail. As you increase this, obviously the number of stitches is going to increase as well. So be careful with that because more detail just means a longer sew out time as well. Run pitch is basically the stitch length that the machine uses. So a higher stitch length means you'll be missing out on details, um, like in smaller gaps and things like that. So for the highest detail stitch out that you can get, you want the lowest possible run, run pitch, which is two millimeters. If I update that, you can see that a lot more detail pops into the image. That's because the stitch length is smaller, so it can fit more stitches. The brightness and contrast is the same as before. If, if you update these, it's just going to try and change the colors to match that new brightness and contrast setting. I think that that can look odd most of the time, but in specific applications, I can see why you would maybe want to do that. If you click select from candidates, you can see a graph or an option sort of chart of options of different contrasts and brightness. And this can be sort of handy if, if you think one looks better than the default. I like it as it is, um, the default color profile, so I'm just gonna keep it like that. And hit cancel. Sewing the page color basically means sewing whatever your background color is. Um, if you were gonna stitch onto a white hoodie, for example, maybe you wouldn't wanna stitch out the white just to save some stitches and just have that as blank space. Um, you can see if I if I untick that and update the preview, you might be able to see that it gets rid of a few of the white stitches um, where there would be white stitches. I'm going to go ahead and keep that in though because I don't really want gaps in my embroidery, basically. If you tick add mask outline, this is just going to show you the outline of your mask. Under others, you have a few more options. You have conversion priorities. Jump stitch reduction means it's gonna try and reduce the amount of times that the machine moves its head and how far it moves the head. Uh, this can be useful for reducing stitch time, but you will lose quality in your image. The image type is the style at which it's going to try and replicate. Photo is obviously gonna be realistic and then cartoon I'll show you is a more like cartoon depiction with more block colors depends on what effect you want to go for. I'm going to keep it on photo though. Photo is a bit more sketchy, but it, it stitches out really nice. Right, I'm going to go ahead and click finish as I'm done now. As you can see, it automatically removes the image from the background and there you have your stitch out ready to go. When you're previewing the image like this, it may look a little bit crazy but I guarantee you it looks better than the realistic view. If you come up to here to your view tab and then change to realistic, you'll see that it looks somehow even worse. That's because it's trying to emulate the stitch texture and thickness and for photo stitch, it just doesn't do a great job at showing you what it's gonna look like in the end. I honestly think that 
The only way of doing it is by stitching one out once and you'll know that they actually are really good. It doesn't look like it right here, but they stitch out incredibly well um, and they do look really good in the end. So don't be disheartened just because of this preview. It will look a lot better in real life. This is 33,000 stitches, so it's still quite a large embroidery. I would probably say that that would take at least a couple of hours, if I had to guess. Um, as you can see, if I hit play at the bottom, it stitches out in a very strange way. It will try and do each colour first, and then the next colour, building up an image with each colour that it does, but in a very sort of sketchbook, sort of sketchy sort of way. The, the results are very impressive. It can be really nice for like family portraits and stuff like that. It's just a great effect. Like I said at the beginning of this video, a lot of people think that this is sort of the holy grail of digitizing, but there are definitely compromises that you have to make when you're using this method. You don't have the freedom of a manual method. Um, and it can be a lot more fussy when when it comes to the preparation, depending on the picture that you use. I obviously chose quite a nice image to use here, one that I knew would work pretty well. But if you don't have separation between the background and the foreground, you will struggle. Um, or you could struggle, rather. Um, and it will be a lot more of a manual method to separate that background. So those are my tips and tricks on how to use Photo Stitch. Um, just a couple more things that I, I would recommend is I would recommend not resizing the image after the fact. I would try and do it the right size from the beginning. Um, as if you can see at the bottom left, when I change the size of it, it actually does not reduce the amount of stitches in it. So in order to do that, you need to hold down control um, and that will reduce the amount of stitches. Um, by default, it won't actually change the amount of stitches based on the size. So I would be careful with resizing after the fact. I would try and get the right size when you're going through the process at the beginning. As for the colors, I would try and be as true to the colors as possible because even if you change the shade a little bit, you can end up with some kind of crazy shadows or crazy outlines because the, the two colors may not match as well as they do in your head. If you try and swap out, say, a grey for a slightly lighter grey, it can make the shadows too bright in some areas, and it can it can look quite odd. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this quick video, and um, I hope you make some great designs with this, or some great gifts for people, or something like that, because it can be very, very personal, because you can use images of people, or of people's things that they like, um, and it's a one-to-one -one replication, so... It's very nice for personalised gifts. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm currently working on a much more manual digitising video, but it's just taken me a little longer than anticipated. So that will be coming soon. Thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing. And um, yeah, stay tuned for more. I'll see you in the next one.